Hi, this is Chris Maloney. I want to talk about One More Life, all the biological standards in one lecture. This, of course, is based on One More Night from Phil Collins. So that helps you remember One More Life, One More Night. Biological standards are, there's four of them, uh, molecules to organisms, cells into larger objects, ecosystems, interactions and energy dynamics from the tiny, tiny single cell organism all the way up to the world, heredity, basically the inheritance of traits from generation to generation, and then biological evolution, the modification of those traits to help people adapt to a better life. Starting with a the cell, there is no such thing as a standard cell. Cells are incredibly diverse. This is actually a macrophage eating some other cells. So cells are incredibly diverse. As biologists, we play a game. We say, look at all the similarities between an animal cell here and a plant cell here, how they share different characteristics and how they're very similar. But that's in that way, we've basically taken all animal cells and made them look like one cell and all plant cells to make them look like one cell. And then we said, look how similar they are. These two kind of stereotypes we've made of these two cells. But there's no template. That's Giardia. That'll give you diarrhea on the left. That's a single cell organism. Middle is Salmonella. That's what you eat on undercooked uh, hamburgers, that'll give you diarrhea as well. And on the right, looks very similar, but it's plague. You've got plague, now you need penicillin or you're gonna die of the plague. So though all they look similar, they can have very different reactions in the body. Well, we'd like to divide things into nice plant and animal situations. This lovely little fella is Mesodynium chamomilion, which is a single-celled green creature that can either eat other cells, other animals, or it can produce its own photo photosynthesis and generate stuff as a plant. So it does both. It cross hits. It's both animal and plant. And here we see this is a liver cell, I mean a liver set of cells, and this is a, uh, a um, dendrite in your brain. And you can see how different they look even though they share the exact same DNA. So context is everything to a cell. And it's absolutely the same for plants. Here's the root cap. These are the same DNA as the vasal, the vascular cylinder in the middle here. How do they know how to be a vascular cylinder, not a root cap or not a root hair? All of these different cells are contextually oriented. They actually know what they are based on what other cells around them are, not by their genetics alone. So we don't really understand how cells know what to do, but we're going to use stuff like stem cells, which are undeveloped cells, and we put them all over in the human body, and they can reverse all sorts of diseases because they can adapt to all these different situations because they're stem cells. And as you get older, you still have stem cells. You have a lot when you're younger, but you still have them when you're older. So this is really good for medicine. While we don't think we understand all about cells, we do think we understand a lot about evolution. Basically, the finches have different beak types because it helps them eat different food more effectively. Those with different other beak types didn't live as well or propagate or have babies as well as those with the beaks that actually help eat the food that they ever had available. So that's adaptation. Adaptation is evolution. That's the model. So we'd like to think that applies to us as human beings, that we are the most adapted uh, humanoids on the planet. It gets a little iffy as we get into modern culture. Notice that last chart actually showed us as the end of evolution. We need to do a variation of evolution. A lot of different animals share similar brain structures, similar hand structures than we do. We may just be a variation that's very successful at this moment in time. And we should consider the possibility that maybe we're not that smart. The dolphins stayed in the water they developed very, very interesting social structures. They have the ability to recognize themselves in a mirror, have sophisticated problem solving skills and experience the complexity of emotions, and they swim around all day. They don't have to work for a living. But we cannot give ourselves less credit. We have managed to warm up our planet dramatically. And that's something the dolphins haven't done. I'm not sure if that's something we should pat ourselves on the back about, but there is definitely a difference between us and the rest of the animals on the planet in that we are the ones causing most of the problems right now. And that, in a nutshell, is all of biology. Thanks for coming.